The joy bells of heaven ain't ringing this morning. You need some help. Amen. You need some help. Amen. Lamentations 5. Amen. Verse number 19. The presence of the Lord is among us. I believe the presence of the Lord is here. Somebody need to be saved this morning. Amen. Somebody need some help in their soul. You don't got to wait. You don't got to wait. You ain't got to wait for the message to be over. You ain't got to wait for a special time, a special invitation. This altar is open. Amen. God, deal with your heart. God, move on your soul. You just come down and take care of business with God this morning. Amen. There is a river. Amen. There is a river. And it's still flowing this morning. Amen. And I believe if you're thirsty this morning, I know a river. Amen. That will quench the thirsting of the soul this morning. Well, glory to God. Amen. I feel like... I feel like the meeting has begun. Amen. We've been fighting the devil. Amen. We've been going through one situation after another, one trial after another, one test after another. Amen. But, brother, God has overruled the devil. God has overcome the devil. Thanks be to God that gives us the victory this morning. I've got victory. Emotionalism, but these are people who have come through great tribulation. Have come through great tribulation, having washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah to God. Amen. I'm encouraged this morning. I'm encouraged this morning. My heart's overflowing this morning. Amen. All right. Holy Ghost, help us preach this morning. Amen. Lamentations, please. Lamentations chapter 5. Lamentations chapter 5. Verse number 19. Thou, O Lord, remainest forever thy throne from generation to generation wherefore dost thou forget us forever and forsake us so long time turn thou us unto thee O Lord and we shall be turned renew our days as of old thou hast utterly rejected us Thou art very wroth against us. We'd like to take our thought from verse 21. Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. Amen. Our thought this morning, we shall be turned. Yes. We shall be turned. The reading there in verse 22 is properly interpreted, unless thou hast utterly rejected us, or unless thou art very wroth against us. Jeremiah here, as you know in the book of Lamentations, is lamenting over the conditions of Israel. The Jews had been taken captive down into Babylon, and it seemed like God had completely withdrawn from the children of Israel, and hence that's his question, does thou forget us forever and forsake us so long time? The fact that Israel had messed up was not in question. They were rejected. God had allowed them to go into captivity, and he was angry. There was no doubt about that. He was upset, and God does get upset. God does get angry. Amen, and brother, we need to realize that today. See, like today, people are trying to soften the severity of the judgments of God, but God is angry today, and God is a God of judgment. And what Jeremiah is saying here, though, I know you're angry, I know we have messed up, but nonetheless, we have zero hope. We have no help unless you help us. I, listen, I know you're upset. <laughs> And I know we've done wrong, but you're still our last hope. If, if, if you don't turn us, if you don't help us, then we're not going to be helped. 
if you don't intervene on our behalf. See, we, we have no one else to appeal to. Yes. As angry as you are, we still got we still, we still to ask. We still got to seek the Lord. What I want us to understand this morning, church of God, is there is no help outside of God. Flesh will fail you. People will fail you. The world will fail you. Amen. And brother, despite even if we're in a bad shape this morning, God is still all we got. God is still our only hope this morning. He said, however, God, I know you're angry. I know you're upset. But if you will turn us unto thee one more time, if you would just help us one more time, then we shall be turned. Listen, if God turns us, then we're turned. If God moves on our situation, it doesn't matter how bad it looks. It doesn't matter if Babylon is surrounding us. It doesn't matter what, what punishment we've had to suffer. If God speaks to our situation, if God moves on our situation, then we're turned. Then we're turned. And brother, I say God wants to turn some things today. We shall be turned. Listen, if God's on our side, we don't have to worry about nothing else. We don't have to worry about what they're preaching. We ain't got to worry about what they're saying. We don't got to worry about what they're whispering about, brother. If you're fighting this, brother, you're fighting against God. All you got to worry about is if you're lined up with God this morning. Are you lined up with God this morning? Listen, if you're lined up with God, there's not a devil in hell that can touch you. The devil himself can't touch you, brother. He can unleash all the fury of hell on you, but with God standing with you, amen, not one dart he fires will touch you this morning. Amen. If God does not turn us, though, we're done. We can preach. We can sing. We can testify. We can have cat meeting revival. We can do all kinds of things in the name of religion. But if God doesn't help us, it's all in vain this morning. But that's why we need the presence of God. Brother, in a meeting coming up this week, brother, I'm not worried about who comes and who doesn't come. Brother, there's only one person I'm worried about showing up. And we need him. Because if he's not here, brother, every word we utter, every song we sing, every message we preach will not be of any benefit to anybody. If God turns us, then we're turned. If God will help us, then we're helped. Amen. Understand, church of God, there is no solution outside of God. You're not going to get in a meeting somewhere and, amen, work it out. Brother, you're not going to talk on the phone and hash it all out. Brother, you're not going to, amen, go down to the doctor and fix it. You're not going to go get a loan out and solve all your problems, brother. God is the only solution this morning. And, brother, we need people to come to the place where God is their only solution. There is no solution outside of God. And you need to understand that there are some things that man control, but there comes a point, brother, where no man can help you. Brother, there comes a day when the doctor says, there's nothing more I can do for you. There comes a day when the therapist says, I can't do anything for you. There comes a day when the meds no longer work. Amen. There comes a day, amen, when the money, amen, won't solve that problem. Come on. Amen. There are some things that are completely beyond the control of all, of all men. And only God can change some things. Only God can change. Listen to me. No man can save a soul this morning. No man can save a soul this morning. Only God can save a soul. Only God can take someone that is bound by sin. Only God can take someone who desires to do sin and completely change their entire being that the things they once found pleasure in, that today they say, I have no pleasure in them. I don't even, it's not even that I'm struggling with it anymore. Brother, you can get to a place where the world has no appeal to you. Brother, the things you struggled with as a convert, you can get so deep in God this morning, the devil knows he can't touch you with that. Amen. Why? You're an entirely different individual. 
You're an entirely different person. Only God can do that. There's not a religion in the world that can do that. Amen. There's not a, there's not a, a, a group in the world that can do that. Amen. Only God can save a soul. Only God can save a soul. Only God can heal a body. Only God can heal a body. No preacher can heal a body this morning. I can't heal your body this morning. I can pray the prayer of faith, but I can't heal you. And you better understand that this morning. And brother, you're going to come to a place, brother, the doctor can't do nothing for you. Amen. You are going to have to be able to trust God or else. And brother, I believe God brings us, not just in our physical afflictions, but brother, he brings us to a place where you have no, nothing else to depend on but Almighty God. Even all this controversy today about divine healing and this, that, and the other. Brother, God heals. Only God can heal. You can preach divine healing till you're blue in the face, but if God doesn't heal, you're not going to be healed. You can say a lot of things in the name of religion, brother, but if God doesn't turn it, Brother, you can say a lot of things, but if God's not with you, then it's not going to happen, brother. It's not going to happen. Brother, amen, we can preach about salvation all we want, but brother, only God can save. Just because we preach something doesn't mean we have something this morning. Amen. You better have, but what, did, uh, what did Peter and John say when they went to the temple beautiful? They said, such as I have such as I have. Not something I'm preaching about. Not something I heard. But I got it. I got it. Such as I have. Give I unto thee in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. Amen. And Jesus Christ is just the same today. Amen. I believe he can still raise up out of wheelchairs. I believe devils can still flee. Yeah, but I believe bodies can still be healed. Yes, sir. Yeah, but I believe God wants to do it, brother. But we got to have them. We got to have the genuine thing, brother. We can say a lot of things, but such as I have, if God doesn't help us, we're not helped. Only God can heal a heart. Only God can heal the wounds of the past. Brother, only God can bring emotional healing. Only God can bring mental healing. Brother, there are some things that have gone so deep with people. It's beyond the help of man this morning. Brother, only God can help them. Only God. Listen, when you pray for folks, brother, pray that God moves on their situation. You try, anytime you try to tell God how he needs to move. Ah, uh -uh, you don't know how God needs to move. Only God knows how he needs to move. Just pray that he does. Hey, but what did the centurion say? If thou just speak the word. But I just need you to say it. I just need you to speak the word and my servant shall be healed. But all we need is a word from God. All we need is a word from God. That's it, brother. People can say what they want to say, but we just need a word from God. Amen. There's some situations the credit card is not going to fix. There's some situations that are moving, moving, to, amen, relocating. People trying to do that, relocating. Amen. I need to change the scenery. It doesn't help them. Doesn't help them. Amen. There's some things that that's not going to fix. Uh, you can try to eat healthier, but brother, listen. And you should. And you should. But come on. There's some things, brother, eating healthier ain't going to solve it. Brother, you can read books. You can listen to a podcast, but that ain't going to solve the problem. You can try to go get more educated. That ain't going to work. Brother, you're going to come to a place where only God can help you. Only God can help you. And there comes a time when if there is going to be help, it's only coming from God. If there's going to be help, it's only going to come from God. John chapter 11, please. John chapter 11. Amen. We shall be turned. Brother, we shall be turned, but we need God to turn it. Yeah, we need God to do it, brother. And we need to come to the place, brother, that everything is beyond our ability. 
Brother, there's nothing that we can do. Brother, we, we, listen, and you're not going to force God either. Amen. You're not going to make God do something. People think they're going to get down and pray and command God to do something. Brother, you better pray the will of God. Amen. Amen. And brother, you better be living right too. Amen. You better be living right, too. People trying to get prayers through, amen, over junk in their experience, brother. It's not going to work that way. I wonder why God's not turning. Listen, he told, he told, listen, he let them go into Ai. He let the children of Israel go into Ai and got slaughtered. And got slaughtered. Why? Sin in the camp. Sin in the camp. What did he tell Joshua? Get up. Get up. And go family by family. Search the camp, because I'm not blessing over this. I'm not blessing over this, brother. And God's not blessing over a mess today. John chapter 11, verse number 14. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Uh, Jesus had said a few scriptures prior that this sickness was not unto death. And he meant that. Amen. He meant that. Yes, sir. But his disciples could not understand. They thought he was just asleep. Well, if he's sleeping, good, let him rest. And finally, Jesus had to let him know he's gone. He's dead. He's not conscious anymore. He's not breathing. He said it plainly unto him, just like that. Lazarus is dead. Brother, this, that's a hopeless situation. There is no doubt that this situation is beyond human intervention. No man can raise another man from the dead. And I believe Jesus let that happen just for this purpose. Listen, nobody else is going to get the glory here. Nobody else is going to get the glory here. Amen. There is no one that can raise another man from the dead. Amen. This was hopeless. This was no, there was no human intervention that could bring this man back. But understand that God is glorified the most where there are situations that no man can help. You understand God is not in the business of trying to share his glory. He's not interested in sharing his glory with anybody this morning. Amen. And brother, listen, you wonder why God's not moving in some places this day, these days, because he won't get the glory. And brother, don't think we're exempt here this morning. Amen. Brother, God ain't going to move among us if we ain't going to get the glory. Amen. And brother, that's why we better get all this flesh out the way, brother, so that God can get all the glory. Yes. Brother, if God does something for you, give him the glory. Amen. If God healed your body, give him the glory. Amen. If God saved your soul, give him the glory this morning. Amen. If God answered prayer, give him the glory this morning. Because he's not trying to share his glory with anybody. Jesus said, Lazarus is dead. Verse 15. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe. This was for their faith. You know God's going to put you through some situations to help your faith. Oh, Lord, give me more faith. Okay. Amen. Lord, I want more faith. Yes. I want you to have more faith too. Come on, son. Amen. I'm going to put you through some situations that are going to try your faith. You're going to sit there and go through it. Listen, but he's dead. How, how am I supposed to have faith? He's gone. And Jesus said, I got you right where I want you. Amen. Amen. Nevertheless, let's go. Let's go unto him. And then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go. <laughs> we'll just go die with him. I don't know that their faith was feeling particularly inspired. <laughs> And brother, that's just how God works sometimes. He's going to put you through. And it seemed like the way he's bringing you is not inspiring to faith. Amen. Amen. But brother, that's, the, that's how faith gets exercised. Amen. But Thomas' attitude was, look, and whatever his reasoning was, we know that Thomas was, uh, he, he had a little, historically had a little struggle with faith. Amen. He was the one that said, look, I got to put my hands in the, 
and listen, God still kept him around as, as a disciple. Christ still left. Look, I'm going to help you out. So if you need some help in your faith, just stick around Christ. Stay in the Word. Amen. Stay close. Amen. You might have a little unbelief this morning, but stick around. Amen. Yeah, God, listen, Christ will help your faith. You might not be able to trust perfectly this morning, but stay around. Amen. Thomas didn't just stay there. He said, okay, I'll go too. I'll go too. And brother, may that be your attitude. I'm going too. Amen. Amen. I'm just sticking, like Peter said, where are we going to go? I'm sticking around. Amen. I want to see what God does. Whatever Thomas's reasons were for expressing such a comment, I can't say he was full of faith. He was hope they were hopeless. They felt hopeless. Let's skip down to verse 21. You all know the story, most of us. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know. Brother, you better go back to what you know. Look, I don't understand some things. I don't see them, but there's some things I know. That even now, brother, I don't say she was full of faith, but she had some. She said, even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, I know God will give it to you. I know that. Brother, listen, it's a beautiful thing to have Jesus praying for you. Amen. Listen, sometimes you don't know what to say. You don't know what to pray. Just say, you know what, Jesus, you take it from here. Because I know if you pray, I know whatever you ask for, it's going to happen. So whatever you ask, I'm ready. I just need you to take the prayer from here. Look, I'm just going to kneel down here. I'm going to be quiet. And I, with, with some groanings that cannot be uttered, I just want you to intercede. You, you pray. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. But I know that whatever you ask, it's done. If you turn the situation, it's turned. If you speak the word, it's done. It's signed. It's sealed. It's delivered. I know he's in the grave. But listen, you go ahead and pray, though. I know he's been there for a day, but you just go ahead and pray. Why don't you pray? Amen. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I, I, Listen, I know. I know, I know what you, I, I, I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. Because I know about the resurrection. I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection. <laughs> you know who you're talking to. I ain't got to wait till the last day. I am the resurrection. I am the life. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, Yet shall he live. Listen, brother, we got to understand this morning that Christ has all power in heaven and earth. Those were some of his final words before he left here. He said, I have all power. I want you to understand before I leave here, I have all power in heaven and in earth. He said, look at one place. I have power to lay my life down. And I have power to take it back up again. Listen, you know death has no power over Jesus Christ this morning. He said this sickness is not unto death. Why? I'm the resurrection. Amen. I decide what I'm going to do. It's up to me. This morning it's not up to men. It's not even up to the devil this morning. It's up to God. Amen. There is nothing this morning that is beyond the scope of his power. There is nothing beyond the scope of his power. Go down to verse 38. They took him down to the grave and the Bible says he wept. 
And go down to verse 38, Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. No one expected Lazarus to live again. That was a closed issue. They had not only put him in the cave, but they rolled the stone in front of it. This is over. This is over. You know what Jesus said? And this is what he's saying this morning. Take ye away the stone. Some people need to take the stone away this morning. So God can work. You're blocking up the access way. Amen. You're blocking up the power. Move the stone out of the way this morning. Some things you might have already sealed. You said it's done. It's over. It's a closed issue. Jesus is saying, roll that right there. Roll, roll it away. Roll the stone away. Take you away the stone. Get that out of my way. Get that out of my way. But uh, there's some things people have been dealing with. They need to move the stone this morning. There's some long-standing situations that people have thought they'll never get straightened out. They'll never be touched. They'll never be different. God's saying this morning, move the stone. Say, Brother Nathan, it seems so. It seems dead this morning. It seems hopeless. It seems completely, amen, uh, 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 utterly, in I'm in despair. I don't think this will ever work out again. But God's saying, move the stone this morning. Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith to him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. For Jesus said unto her, did you hear me? Said I not unto thee, if thou wouldest believe. Listen, I hear people talking about they want to see some things. But I do too. Do you believe the word of God this morning? Brother, do you believe the word? Listen, we don't need, we don't need a dynamic message. We don't need three weeks on faith. We need to believe the word. He has left us the word of God. You want to see the glory, brother? You better believe the word. Do you believe the word of God this morning? If thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. How do we see the glory of God this morning? By our faith. Faith in the word of God. Amen. Then they took away the stone. My God, God wants, to, wants you to take away some stones this morning. Amen. It's time to revisit some things that you thought were over. Amen. Some things in your experience, you, put a, you, you sealed it. You put a stone over that and forgot about it. God's saying, roll that away this morning. I want to, I want to bring some life there. I'd like to revisit that this morning. That, that thing you wrote off, that thing you dismissed, that thing you thought was over, I'd like to go back over there this morning. Amen. Jesus is saying, take, take, me to the, take me to the place where you've laid it this morning. Take me there. Amen. Roll the stone away. And brother, stop questioning it. Stop letting doubt and human reasoning talk you out of your blessing this morning. Just roll the stone away. Just roll the stone away. Take ye away the stone. You have to, listen, for you to get something from God, you have to open some things up to God. The reason why people are not receiving some things from God like they are is because they have a closed door. And then they somehow want God to just jump on them. They want God to just overpower them. And if he doesn't, then they start getting bitter against God. Amen. And brother, then their faith is gone. When all they should have done is open their heart up to God and allowed him to work. 
Stop trying to use your own reasoning. Listen, God is not interested about how things look to you. In reality, how you feel about it this morning is not the issue. Well, I feel and I think and I, well, that's why God can't move this morning. Because it's about how God feels. And you got to get the mind of God. And you got to get the burden that God has this morning. And I'll tell you, if you don't, some things will never change. Some things will never change. Just move the stone away. People have a stone protecting the area where God wants to work today because they feel it's hopeless. In their estimation, they've already reasoned it out. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not. And I'm telling you, there been many people got that memory verse down, but they haven't lived it out. Oh, they got the memory verse. They got the memory work done. They, they know those two verses in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and they can recite them since Sunday school, but brother, they ain't lived them. Because when push comes to shove, they lean on their own understanding. When they get in a bind, they lean on their own understanding. When they get in a situation, they fix it. Come on. When they get in a tight spot, they lean on the arm of flesh. Because it seems right to them. It seems right to them. Move the stone away this morning. Move the stone away this morning. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee. Amen. That's a good way to pray. Amen. That's how he started his prayer. Yeah. He said, I thank thee yeah. that thou hast heard me. Yeah. Brother, listen, you got to know God's hearing your prayers. Yeah. And the Bible says that if our heart condemn us, then we don't have confidence. If our heart condemns us not, then have we confidence towards God. If our heart condemns us this morning, we can't pray with confidence. We can't pray with confidence because we know our living hasn't been where it ought to be. Amen. And brother, you can't just pray over things. It's not going to work that way this morning. Brother, you have to pray with a clear conscience. Amen. Got striving in the home. Husband and wife can't get along. Then you try to get down and pray. Got tension and strife and amen, backbiting and all this kind of stuff, stuff working. And then you try to get down and pray, brother. And it's not going to work that way. Amen. It's not going to work that way. God does not work over things. Amen. amen. You better, you got to be able to pray with confidence. I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Amen. Today, I see people, they make very little effort when it comes to their soul. They make very little effort. They, they really want God just to jump on them. They just want God to, they want God to be their little, amen, little escape boy. Whenever they need, they get in trouble and they just want to ring the bell and he get them out of trouble here and there and get them out of a bind, but they don't want to live for him. God is not your escape hatch this morning. Some people, they're real sober when, when they're going through. They pray real hard when they're in a situation. God is not your escape hatch this morning. Amen. There's a living that you must do. And brother, listen, it is hard to pray when you know your living has not been where it ought to be. It's hard to pray, brother. It's hard to pray. And it seems like when people get in a bind, then they have to start going over their life and saying, well, Lord, I'm sorry about this, and do you want this, that, and the other, and if I need to make this right. And, you, and brother, listen, it shouldn't take that every time you're in a bind. Because there's going to come times when you need to get a hold of God right then and there. Come on, let, let your child be sick. Yeah. And that, that temperature keep going up. Yeah. Come on, that temperature keep going up. Yeah. And the devil right there. Right. And brother, if your living hasn't been right and you try to get down and pray, brother, listen, you, 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 there's no confidence. Yeah. Come on, there's no confidence. Yeah. And then people, they can't even pray for their children. Got to run here and run there and try to get this. Why? Because they're living. Yeah. Because they're living. All the fussing and fighting at home, so they got to go get, you know, the Tylenol and this, that, and the other. Why? Because they can't pray. They can't rebuke a fever. Come on. I remember when my child was very young, and we didn't know she was allergic to something. 
And she had given her something, and she began to hives just begin to break out all over her body. And brother, we need to get a hold of God right there. We hold, get a hold of God within a you know, little bit. God began to move on that situation. Amen. But I often think back to that man. Listen, what would we have done? Got con condemnation over us and fighting and bickering and this, that, and the other. Brother, listen, you got to be in a place where you can pray. Amen. You got to be in a place where you can pray. Listen, and listen, your children need your prayers. They need your prayer. They need mommy and daddy in a place where they can pray. Pray. The Bible talks about husband and wives that your prayers be not what? Hindered. Not hindered. And people got hindered prayers today. They've got hindered prayers today. Amen. But don't touch my marriage, preacher. Don't touch my family, preacher. Don't touch my worldly living, preacher. Don't touch the questionable things in my life, preacher. And brother, roll the stone away this morning. Amen. 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 You need a resurrection to take place. Amen. Amen. All right. Verse 42. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it. He said, look, I already know you hear my prayers, but I'm, I'm doing this for their sake. Amen. I'm doing this for, I, for their sake. That they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he, had thus, when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! He said it boldly. He said it declaratively. He wasn't doubting. He wasn't questioning. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. Brother, that's all we need is God to speak. And the dead will come alive. Amen. Amen. I don't care how long it's been dead. Amen. Amen. I don't care if rigor mortis has set in, brother. No bones gonna move. That blood gonna flow. Amen. That thing that was dead is going to come alive. When you pray, just say, Lord, just speak to my situation. I just need a word. If you just speak to my situation, yes. not me speak to the situation. Let's get that clear this morning. People say, you, you got to speak it. You got to speak it. You got to say a word over it. Say, no, don't you dare say a word over it. Because your word ain't going to do nothing. There ain't no power in your words. There's no power in your words. There's power in the word of God this morning. The word of God is powerful. Sharper. Powerful, quicker. Brother, the word of God brings life. Amen. 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 Praise God. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Read verse 44. And he that was dead. I, I, I just wish I could be there. I just wish we could take a little trip back. Amen. I want to see the faces of those folks. As Lazarus began to emerge. Out of that cave, brother. Yes. Brother, God can do the same thing today. Yes. Yes. Brother, there's some things that can start coming forth. Yes. Amen. Good. Christ wants to speak to your situation today. And he wants some things to come forth. Yes. Amen. God wants to help you this morning. God wants to help you this morning. Say, I can never be saved. He is the resurrection. I'm too far. I've committed too much. I don't see how I can be saved. Listen, the resurrection says you can live this morning. He can quicken you this morning. He can help you this morning. He that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a... He needs some oxygen. He's living. Come on, brother. But he ain't going to live long Everybody, with those napkins around him. Get him some air. Oh, my God. Everybody, he's back. Lazarus is back. And, brother, it's time for something to make a comeback. It's time for a comeback this morning. Amen. I was dead. But, oh, Jesus came. And he gave me a word. 
And he said, come forth. And I came forth. And he said, loose him and let him go. Well, glory to God. Amen. Some of you dying down there in Babylon. Come on. But Jesus said, loose him. He said, he said, I'm aware. He said, come out. Amen. You're in a dead place. You're in a dried up place. Come out and live. And he loosed you and let you go. Amen. God wants to loose you this morning. Loose him and let him go. Listen, when God speaks to a situation, it's done. It's done. It's over. Listen, the reason why people are still wrestling with the same old things is because they've never really got a word from God. They've never really settled it with God. Listen, God didn't leave them half in the grave. Brother, when he was living, he was living. He wasn't partially healed. Come on. He wasn't partially alive. He was alive this morning. And brother, he didn't walk back in that grave. But he walked out and he stayed out. Loose him and let him go. People struggling with stuff, struggling with the same old thing. Can't get the victory over this. Can't get the victory over that. Brother, it's because they have not let the word of God deal with it. If God turns you, then you're turned. That's why we don't believe in a get better program. We don't believe you do better. You just do a little better each and every day. You sin less every day. Come on. We don't believe that this morning. No. When God takes a person out of sin, he takes them out, brother. They don't sin no more. Why? They're an entirely new creature. Amen. When God saves an individual, it's not self-help. It's not a 12-step program, brother, but it's in a moment. It's in an instant. It's an instantaneous work, brother. In that moment, they are translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God. Amen. There's a birth that takes place. They were dead. Now they're alive, brother. They were dead in trespasses and sins, and now they're quickened, my God. When God heals a body, brother, they're healed. They're healed, brother. It's not they just did a little better for a day or two. Come on. Come on. Come on, brother. These testimonies, these weak, uh, these weak testimonies today, brother. Amen. I'm telling you, it's not healing. Amen. If they're still battling with the affliction. Be careful. We'll start lowering our standard. We'll, we'll settle, we'll just settle that it's a little better. Listen, nowhere in the Bible did God leave someone a little better. Nowhere did Jesus walk the shores of Galilee and leave them a little better. Brother, when he left them, he left them well. Come on. Amen. When he left the man over in the, uh, 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 in among the country of the Gadarenes in Mark chapter 5 who had a legion of devils, he didn't leave them with some devils. No, he did it, brother. No, he did it. Brother, the Bible says he was clothed and in his right mind. Brother, what he said, all he had to say was go. One word. One word. And listen, if God speaks one word to your situation this morning, it all changes. At the word of Christ, if he says go, it's done. It's done, brother. Amen. Well, amen. He didn't leave him there. Amen. Still with a couple devils less than him. Every one of them had to go. He was clothed and in his right mind. When he touched blinded eyes, even the one case where the man said, look, I see men as trees walking. He said, that ain't good enough. Ah, let's do this again. Amen. Because you got to see clearly. When God gets through with a person, brother, they are right. Amen. If God helps you this morning, then, brother, the situation has changed. When God changes an individual, they are a changed individual. When God gives you victory over something, he don't mean for you to start battling it again. People get up and proclaim victory and this, that, and the other, brother, and then a couple weeks later, trying to deal with the same old situation, brother. Amen, brother. Listen, God don't mean to give you victory for you to go back and surrender again. When God gives an individual victory, brother, they are victorious. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's close. Micah, the seventh chapter. Micah, the seventh chapter. God will turn us. 
Jeremiah asked there in Lamentations, unless you're so wroth with us. How do you say that? Unless thou hast utterly rejected us. Micah chapter 7, verse number 18. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever. You hear that? He does not retain his anger forever. Listen, God does get angry, but he doesn't retain it forever. He said, look, I don't even delight in anger because he delighteth in mercy. God is a God of mercy this morning. Mercy is what you don't deserve, is getting what you don't deserve. Amen. You deserve punishment, but mercy holds it back. Mercy, or uh, God's judgment this morning says you deserve hell. Come on, you deserve hell. But he delights in mercy this morning. Listen to what the verse says. Verse 19. He will turn again. Come on. Jeremiah was questioning, will, will you turn us? Will you help us? But here Micah says God will turn again. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. God will turn again this morning. God wants to help people this morning. But brother, you got to roll the stone away. You got to remove the hindrances. You got to take the hindrances out of your life, brother, so that God can help you. You know why, you know why Israel ended up in captivity? Because God sent them message after message, prophet after prophet, warning after warning, and they would not turn. So God had to turn them over into captivity. But thank God there came a day when the children of Israel were down there in Babylonian captivity that they got word that the Persian king Cyrus had signed a decree that anybody who wanted to leave could go home. Brother, that was by a mighty hand of God that moved on an old Persian king to turn him, to turn him and say, any of you want to go home, you can go home. Amen. I thank God one day God sent a decree and said, brother, you don't have to stay down here no more. You ain't got to be in this place no more. Come on, come on home. Come on home. This morning, God, amen, wants to build up the waste places. He wants to restore the years that the canker worm have eaten, brother. Amen. And the palmer worm and all that has been destroyed. He wants to restore it this morning. God is a God of restoration this morning. But you have to make the choice that if you want to be helped. If you don't want to be helped, God won't help God will turn again. He is not going to utterly reject one forever. He's the only one that can help. And he's the only one that will help. You can try to seek for remedies and a host of other things this morning. Seems like even around the church today, people are turning to one fleshly resort after another. Have you read so-and-so? Have you listened to so-and-so? Did you hear what this was going on? That, brother, none of that's going to help you today. Amen. Only God can help you now. Amen. If you need some help this morning, it's here. I believe the Spirit of God is here this morning. Amen. I believe the Spirit of God has been faithful to every soul in this service. And God will turn. But this morning, will you turn? Will you let him? Will you open up the access way this morning?
and let God have it and change your entire direction. Shall we stand? Song leader, piano player. We have a number. One twenty-three, page one twenty-three. If you need the altar, it's here. Why don't you come? be saved this morning. God talked to your heart this morning. Why don't you come? Look and live. Listen, 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 listen. Do you have life this morning? Do you have spiritual life this morning? The Bible lets us know that she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Leaving us to know this morning that you can have breath in your lungs. You can have blood running warm through your veins this morning and be a dead person. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You will not find real life outside of Jesus Christ this morning. If you need some help, why don't you come to the one that gives life? There he physically raised Lazarus from the dead. But what Christ is so much more concerned about this morning is another resurrection taking place. He's more interested in raising a soul from death to life. And he can do it this morning if you'll let them. Shall we sing?
thank you for your presence here this morning. Brother Burrow? Yeah, I'll thank the Lord.